This is a part two video on the Microsoft Azure Firewall. Part one was on the firewall design. And in this video, it is on the firewall features. We will have a look at the standard firewall and the features that come with it. And then we will have a look at the premium firewall and the additional features that come with the premium firewall version. And then we will finish off by looking at the firewall manager. And in the next video I will be doing, I will be installing and configuring the firewall itself and doing a demo on the security features and the security firewall policy rules. With the Azure Firewall, there are two firewall SKUs you can purchase, which are the standard SKU and the premium SKU. If you want just a firewall with some limited security, you would get the standard SKU. However, if you wanted to add some additional security features, then you would need the premium SKU. The premium SKU is a more powerful virtual machine because it needs to cope with the additional compute required to be able to scan all traffic using the additional security features. Both standard and premium include the features on the left hand side over here and just the premium has these additional features over here on the right hand side. So going down the feature list, both of them have built in high availability so there's no need to do anything such as configuring a second device like we would do if we had physical tin. When you create a firewall it builds two instances of the firewall itself. And the firewall can be configured to span multiple availability zones. For increased availability, assuming the region you're deploying it in supports the use of availability zones. But just to bear in mind, these availability zones can only be configured during deployment. You cannot change it afterwards. The firewall can automatically scale out with cloud scalability. So it scales out when it's been hit by lots of traffic as Azure Firewall uses Virtual Machine Scale Set, VMSS. To also scale up and down depending on the CPU usage and the throughput and it sports up to a maximum of 30 gig per second of throughput here as well. Application FQDN filtering rules. You can limit outbound HTTP and HTTPS traffic using fully qualified domain names. So that's all that is. And with network traffic filtering rules, you can create rules that allow or deny network traffic by using source and destination IP addresses, port and protocol, and it's stateful as well, so it remembers the connection when it's coming back. FQDN tags, you can use FQDN tags in conjunction with application rules to allow well-known services such as Windows updates, Azure backup, and more through the firewall. Service tags you can use as well, which is basically a group of IP prefixes. And this is not configurable by you. We cannot configure this, or you cannot create any as well. It's managed by Azure. To provide an example, a particular service tag is one for the internet, which is called internet. So you can use that service tag internet inside a rule. And Azure defines the internet with its list of IP addresses, and it defines it as outside of the virtual network and reachable by the public internet. So you can use a rule for internet bound traffic with the destination of the service tag internet. You do not need to manually define the internet. There's already a service tag that defines it. Threat intelligence, you're able to alert and deny traffic from and to known malicious IP addresses and domains based on Microsoft's threat intelligence feed. DNS proxy, you can use the DNS proxy to forward DNS based queries to the DNS server. Custom DNS, with custom DNS, you can configure the firewall to use your own DNS servers to resolve DNS queries. FQDN in network rules. So you can use fully qualified domain names in your network rules. So for example, allow your virtual machine to get to from let's say cisco.com and DNS proxy needs to be configured for this to work. Next, we've got a couple of network address translation rules. So we've got outbound SNAT and you can use outbound SNAT, which is outbound source NAT, source network address translation to translate your source IP address to a public routable IP address, which is required for internet browsing. So traffic knows how to route back. This is because you cannot use original private IP addresses as the source as it's not routable over the internet. So the firewall can change it using the configured public IP address. So we have an example on the right here. So this server here needs to get to the software update servers over here. Let's say cisco.com. And so the source address would be 10.50.0.1, but the destination address would be that of the cisco.com services. So whatever that is. But when the packets reach the firewall, the source address would change from 10.50.0.1 to that of the firewall public IP address, 1.1.1.1. So now this is the source address of the packet. So when that packet is 
forwarded by the firewall to these software update servers over here. The software update servers in the return path sends that traffic to this public IP address because it's reachable over the internet. It had to do this because this IP address is not reachable over the internet. So this way the packet gets back to the firewall on 1.1.1.1. Now from here the firewall translates it back to the original source address of 10.50.0.1 and this is called source NAT and we can have a look at the other one DNAT destination NAT inbound destination NAT here so you can also use inbound destination NAT to translate from a public IP to a private IP for a service you want accessible from the internet so this is inbound traffic to the Azure environment SNAT was outbound traffic from the Azure environment so if you go into something in your Azure environment, that traffic will be destined for a public IP address. And once it hits the public IP address on the firewall, the firewall would be configured to know how to translate it from the public IP address to the private IP address of the original public facing service. And this is the way NAT works. So you can route traffic over the public internet and to a private service in the private local area network. So again, on the left hand side here, I've got an example. It's called destination NAT. And I want to reach a service in this web subnet here, let's say cisco.com again, on this IP address 10.50.0.1. But I don't know this IP address, that's the original IP address. DNS for cisco.com would be configured to reach this IP address here, 1.1.1.1. So once DNS resolves it to this IP address, I would be able to reach this IP address because it's a public facing IP address. And again, once it hits this firewall, the firewall can translate it to its original private address here. And we would only be translating the destination address. The source address would stay the same. It would stay the same on this firewall anyway. My home router would be doing some source natting to let the traffic come back using my home public IP address. So that's the way destination that works. It hits a public IP address and the firewall is configured to know if it hits the public IP address here, that public IP address would be translated to the original private IP address over here of the public facing web service. And the firewall spots many of these public IP addresses. You can configure up to 250 public IP addresses on the firewall. You might have lots of public facing web services and you might also have lots of services that need access to the internet. So you don't want to run out of, you don't want to exhaust your ports on the public IP addresses. So you may need additional public IP addresses to do SNAT as well. So actually that's the next one down. So multiple public IP addresses. It sports up to 250 IP addresses. Again, for lots of public facing services, you want to designate public IP addresses for, or you need more IP addresses for SNAT, reducing the chances of exhausting ports. Monitor logging, you can monitor logs with the use of Azure Monitor and a few other services as well. Force tunneling, for all internet bound traffic, you can send the traffic to a next hop other than the internet, such as a network virtual appliance, which can be a third party firewall. So maybe, maybe it's a third party firewall that you have web filtering turned on, enabled on that firewall. It does the web filtering for your services. It does some sort of security for your services. They need to send the traffic to it to be scanned before it's being sent to the internet. So that's what forced tunneling does. And then the last feature is web categories, which is limited to fully qualified domain names. So you can block access to website categories, such as gambling websites and entertainment websites and so on. And the feature is limited to only fully qualified domain names with the standard tier. For example, you can only specify bbc.com. Whereas with the premium tier, you can inspect the full URL, such as bbc.com forward slash weather to check the weather on bbc.com. And Azure Firewall Premium includes TLS inspection, which decrypts outbound traffic, scans and inspects the data, and then encrypts the data and sends it to the destination. It can terminate outbound and east and west TLS connections. Inbound TLS connections is not supported on the firewall, but for that, you can use the Azure Application Gateway instead, which is a Lay 7 load balancer with built-in web application firewall. That's a better product for monitoring and inspecting HTTP and HTTPS traffic. It's also got a signature-based intrusion detection and prevention system that looks for malicious activity and can log, report and block on it. An IDPS can be applied to inbound traffic. 
spoke to spoke traffic, east and west traffic that is, and, and outbound traffic as well. And the last one is web categories, which is in both of these SKUs, but this one is limited to FQDN and the premium one can also do the full URL, which extends the capability or fully qualified domain name to include the full URL you're trying to browse. Moving on to firewall manager, it's recommended to use a firewall manager to deploy and manage multiple Azure firewalls across across your Azure virtual one hubs and hub and spoke based deployments. If you have multiple Azure firewalls, you can manage them centrally from a service known as Azure Firewall Manager. Azure Firewall Manager is like the Forti Manager from Fortinet or the Panorama from Palo Alto Networks. It manages multiple firewalls across all of your regions and subscriptions, helping you to maintain consistency and your policies and rules and giving you that single pane of glass to manage everything from. It's recommended to create a global Azure Firewall policy to govern the security posture across the whole of your network environment and then you assign it to all of your Azure instances. So you create this single policy on Azure Firewall Manager and you deploy it to all of your Azure Firewall instances, let's say your 20 Azure Firewalls within your as your network so this could be something as simple as blocking absolutely everyone from accessing a specific service in your data center or accessing something on the internet and then you create specific firewall policies for your individual instances so maybe one of your particular regions is allowed access to that particular service so you would have your individual policies for each of the firewall instances as well and on the right side is the setup of an instance of an Azure firewall. So these are the steps you would go through to create a firewall. So you would create a resource group and then you would create a hub virtual network that includes a dedicated slash 26 subnet for the firewall. So it needs to be a slash 26. You would create the spoke virtual networks and their subnets and services. And then you would peer the hub and spoke virtual networks together. Then you would deploy the firewall to the hubs subnet and then for outbound or east and west traffic, you can create a default route that sends all traffic within the virtual network to the firewall's private IP address. And finally, at the bottom, you can configure the firewall with the rules to control network traffic. 